Hello there and welcome. Today we're finally going back to our one season challenges, taking a look at Aston Martin this time, as that has been requested by a couple of people. And basically we are going to take this team and I'm going to show you how you can dominate from the first season well into the second and beyond. So Aston Martin starts as the fourth best team, but will in most people say it's usually fall out off pretty quick. We'll go over exactly why that is happening once we get into the game proper. But we start with a high balance which is very nice the objective is fourth and if we look at the car here we are basically four and a half here fifth in headquarters and staff fourth in drivers and car performance and generally here we should have a pretty swell time with fernando alonso most likely taking the helm so with that said let's just get straight into this now we are going to be following basically a through and test the recipe so if you are watching this video and want me to make a video like this for any of the other teams keep in mind that the strategy that i employ here is going to be viable for basically any team in the game financially you might be a little bit strained but basically it's just that you're gonna have to do it a little bit slower than the way that i do it now once you get into the game here you'll see that alonso is actually negative he's the only negative on uh negative part of your drivers and staff and the main concern is actually his salary so as you can imagine it's kind of hard to get rid of that malice as well as the facilities, staff, and car performance. Now, Stroll is actually a little bit happier, and if you look at the stats here, he's about 80 to 86 in those pace stats, and Alonso is, should be quite a lot quicker. But, of course, mentality could play in here, and particularly in Alonso's case, he's going to be underperforming because of the fact that he starts out with a negative mentality to begin with, and then that just compounds. The AI is pretty bad at managing this, which is usually why... Aston is pretty bad to begin with. Now, in terms of our first moves here, we are going to go with a true and tested one, the underfloor. There are two reasons why I'm doing the underfloor first rather than anything else. And the main reason is straight up the fact that the underfloor gives you cornering for everything. While at the same time, uh, you can make these pretty quick. You can basically have the second iteration of the underfloor done by the time you get to Suzuka. And that's kind of the important thing there. We want to have a new car if we can by the time we get to Japan and China. Now, to do this, we're going to put six engineers and rush this project. We could, of course, run in tents, but the thing is, if you run in tents, you want to have the project last as many days as possible, get the most out of it. And the way intense works is that we pay three times the cost, so one million turns into three, for just one and a half times the gain, and it does not stack with our CFD time usage. So for CFD time, it, we just want this done as quickly as possible. Hence why we're using six engineers, and hence why we're doing rushed. And we'll do some expertise building later on in the season. But yeah, we've invested all of our safety time here. And we've also gone ahead and gone with six engineers and rushed to just speed this project up. Now, the other parts that we're going to be making is going to be chassis, sidepods, and suspension, because they are quick to make. And we also want to invest the next safety period into the front wing anyways, and probably one safety period into the rear wing. So it makes sense to get the chassis, the sideboard, and the suspension out of the way, due to how we want to use our ATR periods. Now, for the chassis here, we do a very simple top speed drag reduction plus airflow middle for cornering, as well as minimizing the lifespan. The chassis still has an insane lifespan even with this, potential of eight races, which would be, you know, you just need three of these over the course of season. So even if you turn it down, it's not really a big deal. It's not gonna be a financial struggle to sort that out. Now, chassis also take 10 days to make with the factory, so we're going to put an extra engineer on it, just to speed up that project slightly compared to the other ones. Next up, side pods, and here we're going to be focusing on cooling and our airflow middle on this first design. We are going to be incorporating top speed into this design later on, but for the initial one, we only care about boosting cooling a lot and getting some cornering, so this is going to be our initial design here with the side pod. For suspension, we're going with a bit of a new strategy here. If you've seen the Mercedes video, we are just going to be focusing top speed and tire preservation as uh, it is actually quite powerful this year. So we're going to go ahead, get some of that top speed back, sacrifice cornering as the suspension this year's edition doesn't really give much cornering to begin with. So we'd rather take that top speed. We'd rather take that tire preservation. And we're going to rush this one as well. With that now, we have our first four initial projects and... If we take a look here now at the calendar, these projects are going to be done before we go to Australia. So basically, one of our cars most likely will be able to be completely new 
if you want to look at it that way. Well, not completely. We're still going to be lacking front row wings, but we can make a strong car already from the Australian GP going forward, which is going to make our life a lot easier. The other floor, first assigning it, is going to be done, uh, as you can see, a couple of days before Jeddah. And if we do another 15 day design, it's actually going to be done before Australia. So by the time we get to Japan, we should have two new underfloors for both cars with relative ease. Next up, we're going to head into the sponsor negotiation here and uh, want to see what we have available to us. Now, you still have a decent chunk of money here, 7 million Aston. So getting upfront pay is probably not too important. In reality here, we want to get race day payments. So we'll go with this package. We'll keep that up here by picking the uh, six race day package here. And if we take a look here, I think we're also going to go with the upfront package and these two balance packages. And lastly, we're going to have to take one of these engagement packages. And I think we'll stick with this one. Now, generally, as a rule of thumb, upfront is the best because you don't have to do anything for it. It just gets paid out. And in this case, we're going to get paid out almost 30 million before the season starts. We're going to have to, you know, budget this money a little bit, but this is a huge amount. 20 million in engagement is probably the hardest funding to actually receive because you have to do activities. And if you have a huge engagement budget, that's going to be kind of hard. And race day is probably your second best source of funding. And generally, if you build a decent car, it should be no problem getting that funding actualized. With that said, though, I think we have everything sorted, just a sponsor plan. And then we're going to jump into the first race here. Generally, I would pick factory uh, engagements. They are probably the best ones. Don't really seem to slow down, you know, uh, manufacturing much, if at all. So these are basically free engagement points that I feel personally. Also going to go and do the same with the wind tunnel and the CFD if we can. Uh, weather center. <laughs> I don't think we need to do that, but you could. It's not a big problem. And as you can see here, we are going to get... It says 10.91 million, but the reality is that we're going to get 2.71. Uh, just so you, just as a hands up here with how mandatory an engagement works now. So, early when the game was released, mandatory objectives paid out the mandatory sum. But the way that it works now is that everything has actually been added to the engagement pool. So you aren't actually getting that mandatory payout over just this period. It's going to get paid out over every single one of the sponsor periods, if that makes sense. So... It is bundled into this number, but it's just visually showing you the wrong thing. But you still get your full amount of money, I believe, now. Okay, with that sorted, we are ready now, I think, to just head directly into Bahrain. Let's see how that goes. For Bahrain, we qualified as expected, more or less. We end up 8th and 9th. We are just behind both Mercs. And generally here, for the first two or three races, our fights are going to be with the Mercedes' cars. And maybe the RBs, because they also tend to do fairly well. Now, the top three teams is someone that we will be able to contend with after the third race of the season. But for these first two, we're just going to be fighting for the last couple of point scoring positions. Maybe a seventh and an eighth. With Mercedes, our car is technically faster than theirs. But I'm pretty sure the Mercedes has a little bit more cornering. Hence, it does have a little bit better pace. Race strategies here, generally, as a rule of thumb, over the course of the season, we are going to be underfueling. It just is quicker, and the way that this works is that we underfuel to the maximum, and we run our fuel usage on uh, conserve. There's a couple of benefits from this, mainly the fact that we are quicker than if we in, end up running with uh, the recommended, let's say, amount of fuel. Basically, this saves you time over the course of the entire race. You'll be less, you know, you won't be as competitive when it comes to uh, car versus car because you're running your engine in lower mode but generally you'll be faster simply just because you're running less fuel now another benefit is as you see the engine cooling in this year's game the mechanical failures is a bit of a problem and running your engine cooler is a good way to avoid getting those problems in the first place hence why this is a decent enough strategy now other than that we are going to be running here particularly in this first race a bit of a light strategy on soft tires as in Bahrain, your soft tires are actually very, very fast. The level where running them light is actually sometimes faster than running them standard. And also here, we are going to want to try and burn our tires and pit a little bit earlier than you probably would expect in order to get a little bit of advantage over the AI. And again, just to get a, give you an, a bit of an idea of just how quick the soft start compared to, say, the mediums. 
a fresh soft versus a fresh medium has about six tenths of a difference between them in lap time. So even if we're running light, we're still going to be a lot quicker than a medium tire and particularly towards the end of our stints, we are going to get all the time and more that we lost at the beginning by running light back. And that is kind of the entire idea here. But this is going to be a staple for this season. Just keep that in mind. And it's not going to work on every track. You can take a look in the reports. You can mess around with the race strategy. But generally here and the compound performance, you can get an idea of which tire is the best. So do use that to your advantage. But yeah, we're going to do this here at Bahrain. And honestly, we're not going to be doing anything too crazy here. So let's just see how this race ends up uh, working out for us. Just to give you an idea of how much advantage you can build up here. This is Hamilton. And as you can see, he's used 30% more of his tire than we have. But we are running basically equal to him at this point. We are, we have overtaken him. And while this is probably not going to be enough to get the Ferraris, the McLarens and the Red Bulls, particularly not in these first three races, building tire offsets by running light and taking advantage of that can be huge. Now, unfortunately for us, in the case of Stroll here, he is unfortunately going to lose some of that confidence that he has built by getting overtaken by Verstappen. That's kind of the negative part of the strategy. And at this point, if we really, really want to, we can actually now start running full on attack and try and make, try and take advantage of the fact that we have built a tire off so that we have built strategy or rather taken advantage of the other teams to try and keep that confidence that we have gained. As you can see, Astro has already lost a lot. So if you see yourself in a position where, in our case, Alonso is starting to get a little bit threatened by Verstappen behind and Leclerc even further behind, we can tune them to full attack. And with that, Stroll should be able to follow Verstappen now. And as we are on worse tires than Verstappen at the moment, being able to follow him would be huge. So the Stroll, this works out. For Alonso, this is also going to work out as long as he doesn't get overtaken, so he remain in high confidence. But that's basically the, the strategy behind this. And we aren't going to be focusing too much on races in this video. We're just going to be focusing on the upgrade path and some of the choices you can make in order to dominate with this team in this year. Get along to that title and then keep it up in the second and even third season. Just to give you another idea of how this strong offset is right now, uh, Alonso is currently running 70% wasted mediums and Piastri is about to pit again. So at this point, when Piastri is about to pit, you can already see that we actually have an offset here, offset here that is strong enough now that we could get Piastri by the end of this and finishing quite a lot higher than anticipated. In a stroll case, he's actually been a little bit unlucky. He had a pit stop error, which was very, very slow. He's been kind of struggling to, more towards the back, which has put him 10 seconds behind uh, Alonso. But even he might get Piastri by the end of this. So it's looking very, very good so far. So once again, just to give you an idea of how strong this tire offset is, right now we are... We're not really having a huge advantage over the cars around us, but with 65% versus 45% and just five laps to go here, we can now start being a little bit more aggressive. I don't think we're chasing down Norris and the signs for a podium here with Alonso, but he is quick. One and a half seconds faster than that last lap as we get a yellow flag. And for Stroll here, he has been able to kind of recover a little bit and he might actually catch Piastri by the end of this if we're lucky. Now we also do have full energy here and we're about to soon go back to balanced fuel. And with that, we might as I mentioned here, maybe get some lucky points. Now, Paris has had an incident where he crashed, so that is why he's behind us. Generally, he would be ahead of us, so this would actually be a 6th or an, and an 8th place, more realistically. But this is still a, uh, a good showing, I dare say, from our boys. Can't really get around that. Now, we are still gaining on the cars ahead here with Sainz and Norris, but as you can see here, Sainz has detached Norris. We might barely get him with uh, Alonso here, but that's going to require us deploying all the energy that we have. And I don't think we are getting him by the end of this. But again, it's one of those uh, honorable mentions, if you will, that we uh, that we might be able to get here. As you can see, Bottas and the Williams there keeping up with him. And honestly, it, <laughs> Alonso might be able to pull off something amazing here, beating Norris on pace on the first track, which maybe means I've underestimated the uh, Aston Martin a little bit just due to how shit it generally is when... Uh, when playing against it, I guess you could say. But yeah, both of our drivers here are now in a position to get their own McLaren on pace. And that could be a hilarious end to this first race. Particularly Alonso. Alonso has a huge advantage over Norris, who is 
getting closer here to getting into puncture territory, which is not great. We're going to go ahead and push and deploy here and go for that last ARS zone. That's going to be our, you know, preferred avenue of attack. And for Stroll here, it just needs to push now and get as far away from Piastri as possible. Let's see, do we have enough power with DRS with the fuel here to get Norris by the end? Probably not by the looks of it, unfortunately. Stroll was at least able to keep hold of his position, but even that is kind of tentative at the moment. Probably also... Ooh, we got close though. Are we going to get it? Get Norris in the final corner, but we don't have anything to work with here. Is he going to get us before the finish line? Alonso in fourth, Good we job. get Stroll here in... Uh, Stroll is actually going to get taken out there by Piastri, beaten most likely, but that is still... Good first race, probably as I mentioned here, we shouldn't be finishing up here. We will take it as a good start to the season. Generally though, we will most likely see 7th and 8th in the remaining two races here. But yeah, a very very good start, and we are going to get into developing the car, more or less. As I mentioned here, also Stroll had a little bit of an issue. And if he didn't have had, if he hadn't had had that, he probably would have beaten Piastri more handily. But yeah, just an idea of how uh, important, particularly in Bahrain, getting a tire off it is. You can take the fourth best car to almost a podium against the McLaren. And with that said, let's see how we uh, will develop the next parts of the car. Our first underfloor design has reached completion, and with that, we're actually going to go ahead here and manufacture one. For Melbourne and that's all we're gonna do we're basically just gonna make one so that we can put it on Alonso's car for Melbourne because if we make two we're not really gonna get much done with them and honestly you could rush two here put one in each car but I'm gonna be a little bit more uh, careful and just make the one so to speak next up we're gonna make another underfloor this one we're just gonna do the exact same thing on that we did last time uh, just gonna get a little bit extra Excuse me, that little bit extra cornering. And we're going to go ahead and rush this with 600 days because we want to get it done in time to uh, manufacture two of these underfloors before we go into Suzuka. That is kind of the entire point by doing this. And also, we do want to get the chassis done as well as sideboard and suspension. We're going to be rushing probably all three of these. We'll have to see. But yeah, with that, we're now ready for Jeddah. And probably here we're going to score a little bit more realistic compared to last race. Jeddah gave us slightly more realistic results here with a 9th and a 10th, which is generally what you'll be expecting as Aston anyways. After Jeddah, we are going to get our chassis design complete and we are going to go ahead and immediately make two. And as I mentioned here, it could be beneficial to rush both of these. You're not going to get them done in time for Melbourne. So it doesn't actually help in that regard, but we have limited slots with just three. So spending half a million here to make sure that we have those slots available to us can be really, really beneficial. So we're going to go ahead and do just that. Secondly here, we are going to get started on the front wing and we're going to invest safety time into it, which means we're going to be making two iterations of this one, which means that we kind of want to rush this one as well. It's going to be a little bit expensive, but in our case here with Aston, you should generally have a lot of money. We also got paid a lot of money up front, so we can actually take things a little bit slower and uh, well, not really a little bit slower. We can throw caution through the wind and actually use rush with no real repercussions. Now generally I would do one or two takes to the right on the lifespan, but we're going to be making another design immediately after. So right now there's no need for that. Put that extra engineer and go rushed and we're going to get this from wing in the oven. Next up we are going to be getting both the suspension and also the side pod design finished here. And we're going to go ahead and rush both of these. We're going to be rushing two side pods. That way we have them before we go into uh, Australia. We're going to get one underfloor tomorrow, which means that we can then do the new suspension design. And with these shoes done, we're going to go ahead now and put a rear wing uh, on the cooker. Uh, generally here, rear wing here is a little bit interesting in how you want to set it up. In our case, they were doing medium speed drag reduction DRS. The DRS Delta, the way that it works right now is that it's very powerful in quality. So if you want to qualify well, investing in DRS Delta is a good thing. It can backfire tremendously though, particularly with confidence. So DRS Delta, better qualifying, easier overtakes in DRS zones, but it comes with the drawback that if your DRS effectiveness is too high, you might qualify way higher than where your car is supposed to be. And as a result, 
you might lose a lot of confidence at a side of races. The AI still doesn't really do sliders, so you maximizing your slider means that you can overtake some of the other teams that don't do it. So if you want to play it safe here, putting your slider in the middle or just keeping your DRS where it is and getting stats for the others can be a decent enough strategy. In my case, though, we're going to try and maximize the expertise a little bit, so we'll do it like this. And maybe we'll sacrifice the DRS delta on the CFD design that we're going to be doing later on, because we're going to be making three railing designs this time around. This one, we're just going to keep until we get to that next the yeah, next uh, CFD slash ATR period. So there's no need for us to really do anything special with this. We're just going to rush this one as well. We have the financials for that. Cost cap is not really going to be an issue unless you use intense designs and crash a lot. So since we aren't doing that, we are perfectly fine in rushing some of our designs here, particularly the first edition of every new part. If you get a stock part, you want to get a new one with sliders on as quickly as possible. Now, the last thing we're going to do here with this science is actually start building expertise. And the way that we're going to do this is that we're just going to do the same sliders that we did. And we're not going to be putting this design on the car. It's going to be marginally better than the chassis design that just finished. But we're going to run this two or three times before we actually put it on the car. And depending on what sort of research regulation we get, we might change things around as well. Now, this is going to take 33 days. We don't really want to. We want any project that has the purpose of building expertise to take as long as possible. So 33 days here is perfectly fine. And we'll be getting that final underfloor design before we go into the next race in... Uh, in Australia anyways, so let's just get that done quick. There we go, the underfloor has also been finished. And what we're going to do now is, as I mentioned, get those two suspensions started. We're going to rush these as well, and we're actually going to have a pretty decent car by the time we go into Australia. And as I mentioned, if you are curious if this would work on the other teams, it will. The sign work pause though is a bit of an uh, unfortunate one. It's one of the worst events to happen, and this is going to slow us down by probably a race weekend or two in terms of our schedule. So in this case, it means that we're not getting that underfloor done uh, until after Melbourne, which means that we might not even get it for uh, for uh, Japan to begin with. But it is just something you're going to have to deal with. And if you're lucky and avoid it, you will be basically ahead of me in this video. But that's not really a huge deal, so to speak. Sidebot has been manufactured, and honestly, because we know we're not getting our designs done until six days down the line, we're actually going to start another side pod, get started on building some of that stock, and we're probably going to do the same here for the suspension. We can actually do this, that way I don't need to worry about it too much. Well, that I actually can't because it just starts another rush project. Let's just wait for that side, uh, that suspension to finish. And as I mentioned here, we just manufacture a new one because it's, it's going to take a few days before we get new designs anyways. Okay, let us take a look at Alonso's car because this is the one we'll be giving every upgrade to. In this case, the chassis to start off with. Straw we're getting in the next race, which is fine. We're going to be putting on the new side pods on both cars. We are going to be using just this one underfloor. Unfortunately, if I knew that we were going to get hit by the delay there, with the underfloor design, I probably would have made another one for Stroll, but we didn't know, so that one kind of backfired a little bit. But everything now on the cars, everything that we can at least, we should be a little bit quicker. And if we go into our car analysis here and take a look, Stroll's car isn't super quick. He has the absolute best tire preservation on the track though, which is something we can take huge advantage of as a player. And we also have very good engine cooling. However, if we look at Alonso's car, who has all the upgrades with the exception of that second underfloor, front and rear wing, we can see that we're already third in top speed. Seven in low speed, medium speed, high speed, first in both of these. At this point, we actually have a car that can win races. And particularly for Melbourne, this shouldn't be a terrible car, I believe. Uh, fifth on the grid, first in Japan, third in China. So as you can see, due to our combination right now, if we were to race at the moment, we would have a podium contender for most tracks. But even that isn't enough here to get him on the happy side of car performance. So we're going to go ahead now and give ourselves that facility boost uh, that I mentioned. Mentality can be boosted really, really easily by just building facilities. In this case, we're going to get the helipad running, we're going to get the tour center running, and we're going to get the memorabilia room running. The main reason why we upgrade these is actually just for the benefit of a temporary mentality boost, although Memorabilia Room has a 
pretty good mentality boost that you kind of want to get to level five as soon as possible. We have deleted here for the purpose of just building mentality boosts. And we also want to do the team hub because that one too does give mentality as well. Uh, with these boosts in now, we can see that Alonso hasn't actually changed in his neutral stance, but he's no longer negative to team principal. So the facility upgrade here has helped and he's going to get even more buffed going into Japan. And he's now getting back to his old self and should be more likely here to potentially give us a podium in Australia. Let's head in, see what we can do, and then we're going to speed up probably the rest of the season a little bit more. As once we get our front wing and the rear wing, we're going to be pretty much unstoppable. We are ready for Australia, and we have an Alonso on pole. Strolls a little bit further down the order. But as you can see, already with these upgrades, we are now very much... Uh, a bit more competitive than we were before. Let's put it like that. It's going to be a lot better also once Stroll gets his upgrades. But uh, this is Alonso just running away currently. Now, you might see something a little bit scarier in terms of this fuel. Negative 25 kilograms. It's a Australia only thing. But it's kind of just proving just that at Australia here, it's even more important to kind of underfuel to get a little bit of an advantage. And... If we can already break away from Verstappen, that would be amazing. But let's see what this race has to offer. As we near the end of the first turn tail, let me introduce you to Sigma Alonso. 95 and 98 overall P confidence. And with that, Alonso should actually have no problems at this point. Just sailing into what might be our first win of the season. So to spice things up here, we now have a safety car in what would have been a... Uh, Easy slam dunk, let's put it like that for Alonso. Ah, uh, Hulkenberg. That's am I'm amazed that isn't just straight up a red flag though. But yeah, um, Alonso now had 10 seconds down to Verstappen. We had about 10 laps, I believe, remaining. 11 laps. So this puts us in a bit of a rough situation. I think we have no choice here but to pitch by soft tire. And we're actually going to do that for both drivers. Stroll has a little bit of a gap here. I, don't th I think Leclerc will also pit again, honestly. And if he doesn't, we should still be fine. Because every single one of the hard runners here are going to pit. There's just no way around it. And if Verstappen and Norris doesn't pit, we'll still be able to turn it into a huge advantage. Norris elected not to pit there. So he's going to fall back massively. Sainz too elected not to pit. But as you see, Verstappen still came out ahead of him. And looks like we are the only ones really with fresh soft. Stroll's not really losing out any, anywhere. Leclerc stays out. That's horrendous. So yeah, this is going to be a bit of an interesting one just because of uh, how things are stacking up. Now, the restart here should be pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, can we run the soft tires just full send till the end? Basically, yes. So on the restart here, we are going to go all in, full send till the end. And we're going to give both drivers orders to go high overtake aggression. They already have them, so we should be fine. But yeah, this gives Stroll an opportunity here to snatch a point of uh, Leclerc, at least some points. And it's also given us um, a very easy overtake here on Norris. And then we can fly till the end. But yeah, first win here should come at this race unless something... Spectacular happens at this point, I dare say. Let's see what we can do. With Alonso now getting us underway. Rather Norris, not Alonso, but you get the idea. You can kind of see just how screwed Norris is. How screwed science is. They're on 50% worn softs. Even if they run full attack till the end, they're not going to be quick at all. And Leclerc here kind of been screwed in that very same manner. We have a tremendous advantage. Uh, fresh soft versus fresh medium isn't a huge advantage. It's just a couple of tenths. But what I think we do here is that we push, get away from Norris, get away from Sainz, and we can now play the game with just Verstappen rather than everyone. We can now slow down. We can run a little bit more light. We can just settle in behind Verstappen, and we can take it from there. For Stroll, he's just going to keep on going kind of full scent, but we do want to save a little bit of energy towards the end here. But yeah, for Alonso, the play right now is to try and build a tire advantage over Verstappen if possible and just stay with him. That's going to be all that this is. Stay with him, build tire advantage, 
get the overtake done on the last lap and just use everything that we have to kind of stay ahead then. That's going to be the play. Stroll is also making his way up the order here really, really nicely, I might add. He's already up into fifth position and up into fourth now. I don't think he's going to get Paris by the end of this, but as can imagine, he's going to be he's going to be pretty quick. Alonso has built a little bit of a tire offset. It's not anything massive or anything like that, but it is good enough. And could Stroll catch Paris here for a podium? Like, remember, Stroll has a pretty terrible car. He's lacking a chance. He's lacking an underfloor. That safety car could actually end up giving us more points in the end, although it's going to make the end of this race a little bit more spicy. Okay, we have one more lap remaining after this one. Stroll is gaining on Paris. Look at that. I do believe we're going to have to use energy, though, to, to chase him down. If we want to make this happen. We're basically now sacrificing energy a little bit. But Sainz isn't going to be a threat. Like, Sainz, Piastri, Norris, none of them are going to be huge threats here. The main issue right now is actually going to be Verstappen. So, I'm going to go ahead and deploy here for Alonso. We're going to try and... Create a little bit of gap, stay ahead on the, in the DRS zone. And just push now on this final lap. And kind of do the same here. Force roll. Again, I don't think we're getting Paris. Paris is just too far up the road. Uh, Alonso does get overtaken, however, which is not great. We have one more DRS zone to make uh, this happen, though. So I still think we can get this position back. One more zone after this. Just go full send, everything, and we should have enough of an advantage here that we get that done, which we actually do. Now, Stroller is actually a little bit in danger from Sainz in a similar way, although he is also jittering all over the track. But that is our first win of the season in Australia. And Stroll comes home here, I believe, to a very surprising fourth place finish. So yeah, already we can fight the Red Bulls. Let's get those last upgrades on the car and then we'll see how the rest of the season unfolds. As we get closer to Japanese Grand Prix, our memorabilia room is done and also our underfloor research. And with that, we can now go ahead and make this final edition underfloor for both cars going into the next race weekend. Japan is a regular race and what you can actually do here, it says 10 days, race weekend is in 9 days. You can actually put this on before you go into qualifying. Basically, this piece will be done while you're doing the second, or rather after you're doing the second practice session. So you can actually put this on the car before you kind of get locked after qualifying. So we can still use these pieces uh, like so. Now, with the final design slot here, we are kind of getting to a point right now where we don't really need to do put much effort into our car anymore. We have kind of designed every piece. We're just waiting for front wing and rear wing to be done. But, so what we're going to do here now is actually start to build a sideboard that is a little bit different from our current one. We're going to try and get a little bit of top speed into it as well. But this is probably going to take, once again, two, three iterations in order to make sure that we don't lose too much end cooling, too much low, medium and high speed cornering. So we're probably going to be spending a little bit of time on both the chassis and the sideboard just to have a little bit of an extra part gain towards the, uh, the end of the season. But of course, we might cancel this if we see that the regulation change is uh, pretty bad for us. That's going to have an effect as well. But yeah, in two to three weeks, we should have a new front wing and rear wing. And then our car is going to be looking a lot better. But for now, we're going to head towards the Japanese Grand Prix. And we'll see how our car looks with basically four out of six upgrades. As we're getting close to Japan as well, some of our facilities are going to finish upgrading. And until your helipad, your tour center, and your memorabilia room hits level five, you want to keep on upgrading them as often as possible. These buildings in particular are very cheap to upgrade. And they do give you that mentality buff. And you probably also want to keep on upgrading your team up if you can. And if you plan on racing young, young talent, getting your race them up as well wouldn't be a terrible idea. Now, in our current situation, we can actually go ahead now and put all of the upgraded parts onto, in this case, we're going to do Stroll's car. But we have enough parts now that both team members can actually get this second underfloor too. We're just going to have to put it on the car more during the race. This kind of now gives us an idea of where our car is at. And once we do get that front wing as well, we can expect to be first in a low speed as well. 
Already our car looks fairly dominating, 4th in top speed, 6th in low speed, again the front wing is going to propel us to first, no question about it. And if we were to compare ourselves to the Red Bull currently, they do have a very minor advantage in top speed, they have a very minor advantage in low speed, but we have a minor advantage in medium, a huge advantage in, in high speed, and generally here our tire preservation is enough that we can kind of turn races at this point purely due to tire preservation advantage. That is also something to keep in mind. Now with Japan here, we should have another good result coming our way. And Stroll is not enthusiastic, which kind of brings up to uh, Alonso's pre sulk stats. And with Alonso now also being positive, you can see that we are reaching the realm now where we can start getting 100 pace stats across the board for Alonso. And he's just going to become an unstoppable monster. So basically, Alonso is going to be a bit of a tough man to beat at this point. Let's go to Japan, see how we do that. As an example of what you can expect at this point, you can see that both Stroll and Alonso have a good 12 plus 7 seconds, 20 seconds to Paris, 12 seconds to Verstappen. And 1-2s are basically going to be kind of your Brendan Butler at this point. Stroll won out this time, he didn't get as uh, held up during the pit stops, so we pit him first. But also you can see tire advantage, 50 versus 30, so as you can imagine, from this point and forwards, you are going to have a very, very calm and chill experience with Aston Martin. Now, the AI is still a little bit behind on development, let's be fair, there's still a pass they need to make. But at this point, you should have a, as I mentioned, a pretty dominant season going forwards. You can simulate, you can do it manually. And we're going to be focusing more uh, on this probably second half of the season where we're going to go into research from this point onwards rather than the races. We've kind of already established ourselves for the races. And if we get to a point where the AI is catching up to us, we're going to go into how you can deal with it. But from Japan and onwards, your main priority is to secure as many 1-2s as you can in order to build a gap to the cars behind. Let's see how that works out for us. Before we go to China, we hit our research period here and we get a 5 to everything or a 10% to everything. We're going to vote for the 10% one because the AI is worse at research than it is to sign. And in order to dominate, we kind of want to hit them with what they struggle the most with. So if you want to make your fighting against the AI, AI harder, go for moderate. If you want to make it, sorry, if you want the AI, your fight with the AI to be easier, harder. If you want the AI to have an easier time and be more difficult, go with the minimal ones. Next up, we are going to get our front wing in six days. So let us speed along till that. And we're also going to, as I mentioned here, keep on upgrading these facilities until they reach level five. It's going to be a mentality buff that is going to keep your drivers a lot happier than they currently are. And of course, as we get high level facilities, it's going to get rid of this facility debuff as well. So there's only really positives from it. And it's also something to do with facilities and mentality. Your drivers don't care if you're upgrading the shittiest facilities that you have, like say your helipad, your tour center, uh, basic facilities that don't really affect them at all. They're going to care just as much if you upgrading these facilities as of upgrading any of these. So do the cheapest ones. It's just the best use of your money and the best way to get that mentality buff. And now we have Alonso in enthusiastic mode. And uh, yeah, Ripperino Tortellini to every other team out there because he's going to absolutely dominate. Unless, you know, Papa, Papa Stroll gives Lance some upgrades that uh, Alonso might not get. Let's put it like that. We are also still manufacturing parts, of course. You do want to build up a healthy stock. I'd say start off with getting four of each part, six front wings, and then build from there. Now, our front wing design is complete here, and we are going to get them ready before China. We're going to do one normal and one rushed. That way, both cars will have a new front wing going into the Chinese GP. And, of course, what we're going to do here is start another front wing research immediately. And again, the reason why we do this, sorry, I designed another research, is to get two slides into minimum lifespan, which is going to give us more lifespan for races. And let me just go over this again, because I did say a couple of wrong things here. We're going to make another front wing, because it's going to give us a little bit more cornering compared to the current one, because we use CFD time. And we also do want to increase lifespan on this one, because one to two can get very expensive, but two to four is tolerable over the course of a season so do this for your lifespan do the same for the sliders and you'll have a front wing that is a little bit more of an upgrade and this should put us squarely in the top one team when it comes to uh your cornering pace now 
we could rush this one, but at this point, we're just going to use six engineers. And we are also going to soon be able to start doing some research if we need to. We might use CFD time on research rather than the rear wing, simply due to the fact that it seems like we are going to be probably not going to need to use that CFD time on the rear wing. Research might be the better option. Let's see here what we get in terms of a research allocation. We get hit with the minimum ones, and these are very easy to deal with. But the way the reason why research is powerful is because the higher your expertise levels, the slower you gain more of it. So the higher your expertise, the harder it is to get more and get higher up on the expertise ladder, the harder it is to get more performance out of the car. Now, if we take a look here at rules regulations, this number here represents how much expertise we're losing. It said 5%, but that means we're losing 5% of our current level of expertise, which in this case is just 2.4%. We have chassis engine cooling. It's just 2.6% here for our side pods. For our front wings, it's 3.44%, so a little bit more here because we have invested CFD time. And we're probably going to see the same if we go for the underfloor. Now, I, as I mentioned earlier, the expertise is harder to come by the higher it is. And when it comes to research, this drop in expertise has already happened, meaning that it's easier to gain expertise through research until we get these 3% that we're losing back. So until you get the expertise loss that you are experiencing back, research is going to be quicker than design in terms of getting expertise. But any designs that we do now is going to lose 5% of that gain anyways because regulation changes. So once regulation changes happen, if your car is in a safe spot, which ours currently is, we are looking like we're going to dominate, I would really recommend doing research to just prepare next year's car. It's going to pay off way more than doing anything else. For now though, we're going to get that front wing prepared and we're also going to get that rear wing prepared for just one car, most likely, yep. And uh, we'll get that prepared for one of the vehicles. And I'm also going to go ahead and upgrade the team hub to the next level. Because we have money, and again, Team Up is one of the buildings, one or two buildings that give you mentality buffs. So let's get that sorted. Now, we do actually have one extra manufacturing slot available here, which we are going to use to make another underfloor. And as I mentioned here, we just kind of want to stock up on parts now while we can. Unless you have four of every part, these should never be running, not running, unless, of course, you're waiting for a design to finish, which in our case, is the rear wing here. Call center has been upgraded as well. We're going to go ahead and improve that one to get a few other things done at the same time. And we're going to go ahead now and manufacture that other front wing. And since it's only two days till the race weekend, and this is a sprint weekend, we're going to have to rush it. We can't really switch it on day one. You can switch it before the race. But if you want to use these components in the sprint itself, you're going to need to rush these components. And we can just make more normal ones afterwards. It's not really a big deal. Now, research-wise, because we get hit with a 5% of everything, the way that I usually use research is that I would put a CFD period into the front wing and the rear wing because A, they're more expensive to start projects for, and B, they do have a fairly large impact on your car. Generally, I would run the other slots on the other four components to make up for it. And we're going to start here by running a research project on our suspension, and we're going to focus on what the suspension is strong at. In our case, we want to improve our top speed, and at high preservation, and you can see here how this is going to affect next year's car. We're going to get another few percent almost high preservation. We're going to get a little bit of top speed, and we're happy with that. So we'll just start that research project. Now, other than that, we are going to get those next two parts here, and then we're going to take a look at what the car looks like now that it has been kind of fully upgraded. We still need that second front wing. I know I've said fully upgraded a few times, but let's face it, the upgrades never end. We just get closer to it. But yeah, we're going to be using the rear wing here for a while. We are going to be making extra front wing in case we break it before next race weekend. Probably going to need a couple more to be fair. But we now take a look at car two. And we go ahead and put these front wings on both cars. And we also apply the rear wing. We should now have S2 on everything, underfloor level three. And with that now, we can see that our car is first in low speed, medium speed, second high speed cornering because we we'll lose a little bit of it from the uh, the rear wing compared to our current one. But it has boosted also to the top three team in terms of top speed, which actually is second place. Car analysis wise, check with the Red Bull. We are basically just one KPH still slower than them. Red Bull just has a huge top speed advantage. 
but we now have a huge low speed advantage we now have a huge medium speed advantage and still have a huge high speed advantage cornering is king so this is going to translate into even more dominance until red bull gets their car sorted and that's probably going to take a few race weekend probably going to be around the summer break before we get any sort of challenge so let us speed along here and get done with the chinese gp in china alongside the list of expectations but stroll does not and has a bit of a dnf here which can happen and it's probably something you will have to deal with throughout this season now driver championship wise we're still catching up to verstappen and it's going great we're also catching up to red bull in the uh championship here but as you can imagine stroll crashing out is going to be an issue that you're going to have to deal with generally your drivers crashing out is going to be a bit of a problem but not one that we can't deal with and we now have our chassis and here we're going to have to make a bit of a decision so we're going to continue upgrading as I mentioned until we reach level five but the chassis design here can we actually make a new one that would be an upgrade as you can see also stroll's crash has caused a little bit of a uh conundrum here particularly if he crashes early or Alonso for that matter crashes early you could end up in trouble with your car parts in this case we've luckily not put it been put in any really you know hard situation but it's still not a it's still not a good place to be let's put it like that it's still not a great situation to be where we are lacking a lot of different car parts in this case we're lacking front wings we're lacking a uh, backup suspension and this is going to be a little bit of an issue that we need to deal with. But honestly, again, it's not a huge problem. Now, back to the fr back to the chance that we just made. If you are looking to make an upgrade, you're probably going to have to run two or three designs before you see any vast gains. This is still a decent game for this early on in the season. But if you run this chassis two, uh, one to two more times, you're probably going to be tripling these gains. And that could be quite a big deal. Now, we are, of course, going to be losing a little bit of this gain. We're losing 5% of it. So in this case, I'm actually going to continue designing and developing the chassis probably two, one to two more times before we put one on the uh, on the car at the end. And we're actually going to do the same here with the sidebars. We're going to be developing these two pieces in particular this year just to kind of give us a little bit of extra oomph towards the end of the season. So we're kind of splitting our slots here, two for design, two for research. But if you're getting hit with a harder regulation change, like 30% to your cornering ability, for instance, any type of cornering ability, you might be better off using five slots for research. It's highly dependent on what regulation change you get, I'll be perfectly honest. For now though, we are going to speed through some of the races here until we get that second front wing. Again, just so you can understand the side pod, we are going to go ahead and make another one. And in this case, we're going to just start the design immediately. And if we compare, you know, the one to the last design, we're still lacking a little bit here. We are getting top speed, but we're probably going to have to do two more designs like this. And we are probably going to have to maybe tune down that top speed gain a little bit in order to make it more viable. But we are going to run this project, as I mentioned, probably one or two more times. And that should be fine. Now, we also have had a bit of an interesting event here where Stroll has lost some performance. He's lost uh, one to two in every stat, which is not a great thing, must be honest, but... Guess what you can expect. I'm a little bit surprised though, as Stroll is only 25 years old, and uh, two races ago, he won. So, I don't know if I agree with that, but it is what it is. The last four CFD pairs here are probably going to go into research, let's be perfectly honest. Now, once we get that final front wing, we're of course going to want to manufacture it. In this case, it's four days before Imola. If we want to here, we can rush this design in order to get a little bit extra performance out of the car. And we might as well. This can be quite costly though, so it's a bit of a risk. But we're going to rush it and pray that our drivers do not wreck the front wing. You can also just do this and put it on one car to be on the safe side. It is an option that you have. But now that we have kind of finished our designs for the most part, we are going to run, as I mentioned, one to two more chassis and side pods. Uh, we're going to focus on research. And right now we have unlocked the next safety period. So we're going to invest that into the front wing. I would recommend doing front wing and rear wing first solely due to the fact that they take 44 days each and that they are very, very powerful as you'll kind of get an idea of once we get the slide is properly placed here. And as you can see, just one CFD period here is enough to give us 0 0.43 gained, 13, 8. This is going to be huge going into next year. So we're going to do this sort of research and 
this should also be enough to cover the 5% loss of expertise. Because again, this is expertise, it does not translate into any of the percentages you see over here. Let's go ahead and get that done. Any research you do, you want to keep one engineer on, get the project running for as long as possible, simply because that is the best way to do research. If you need to put extra engineers on at the end of the year, that's fine. But that's really the only exception as to when I would put more engineers on a research project. Maybe uh, on a different project in November in order to do another one in December. But that's really about it. Once your first research project does finish, in this case our suspension, we want to start another one. And since we've done one suspension project here, we're just going to start an underfloor project. And we're kind of just going to keep these slots kind of rotating. And we want to mimic the sliders that we did earlier. And again, if we are getting a regulation change, we say we get 30% to high speed, 20 to medium, and 10 to low speed, we might want to place our sliders in a similar manner in order to kind of spread out the expertise gain to what is getting hit the hardest. But in this case, everything is somewhat equal, so we're just going to do it straight up like that. And again, try and run as many, as equal as possible amount of research projects on the different parts. With our second chassis design now complete, we can get started on the third one. And honestly here, we are getting to a point now where maybe we want to just make a finalized design and put it on the car. But at this point, honestly, you can do one more. We are getting less and less games here, simply purely due to the fact that our expertise, as I mentioned, is going up. So I'd probably do one more design. And then the next one would be the one that goes on the car as the final edition, and we're going to do the exact same thing for the side pods. With the final leveling or expertise gain chance to complete, we can now go ahead and start the final design. This is the one that we're going to be putting on the car. Now, in this case, again, we're just going to do exactly the same that we have been doing, and it's not going to be a huge gain by any means of the imagination. It's going to be a little bit of a boost here towards the end of the year. We're just going to do this one normally as well. We also had the underfloor research finish and as you saw here we have a new CFD period and we're going to be putting the second period into the rear wing. The first one went into the front wing, the second one is going to go into the rear wing and we're probably going to put the remaining two I think suspension and underfloor or maybe even suspension plus one of the wings again because again they are more expensive to level so it would make sense to put a little bit more effort into kind of expertise boosting them rather than anything else that we have available to us. But yeah, there we are. Let's get the research started here on that rear wing. And uh, if we go two days forward now, we can kind of see the effects that the first research on the front wing has actually had on the car. And if we take a quick look right now, the front wing has given us uh, about almost 10% airflow front, a good chunk of tire preservation, and everything is looking very, very good. Now, we're going to take a look at the board at the end of the season to see exactly how all our research has benefited the car and also, of course, how the car looks next year. But generally, already, as you can see here, the CFT investment is definitely worth it. It gives us a huge, huge bump in expertise gain. Now, so far this season, things have gone actually fairly well. Barcelona, we had both cars on podium, Verstappen Pipters. Canada, Alonso won. Stroll had a bit of a bad one. Monte Carlo, we went 1-2. Imola, first and third, Miami, first and third. So the car is there. We are dominating. If I played the race a little bit slower, probably could have beaten Verstappen in Barcelona. Probably could have done the same here in Canada with or at least have Stroll finish a little bit higher up. But currently in the standings, we are first, as you would expect. Red Bull about 70 points behind. And in the drive championship, we have a small lead over Verstappen. Stroll is in a nice third here. And we're going to keep on trying to keep this going till the end of the season. And if we go ahead now and take a look at the car, as we get into Austria, we're going to take a look at how kind of we compare. We're also, of course, going to go ahead and renew staff members, and we're going to go over that in a second. But if we take a look here now, the car is still first in cornering. We have fallen a little bit backwards in the other categories, which means that the other teams, and in particular Red Bull, is catching up. But this advantage is still fairly huge. They have caught up in high speed, among other things. So we do need to manage the race a little bit more at this point in order to get the most out of the uh, the season, if you will. Now, other than that, as I mentioned, we do need to look at staff. And while both the driver contracts do run out, Science is a good free agent, I've gone ahead and renewed both of these guys' as contracts. Now, in terms of staff here, you have a very, very good sporting director in Stevenson, but... Fallows, there are better technical chiefs, he's still really, really decent. 
Greg is very, very decent. But the AI is pretty bad right now at signing staff and drivers. So take a look here and see. Back, Kadil, both of them you can get. The reason why I'm not interested is because we're close to race weekend. But you can pick up these guys going into next year. Same here with the head of aerodynamic. We can pick up Tondi, who's also very amazing. And for the race engineers, there's a lot of these guys too, who has a one year contract. So you can pick up Bono and GP if you really, really want to. And for sporting directors, you can pick up Wheatley. Like there's literally no staff member in 24 at the current time who will be not interested in a contract offer. But we're gonna continue this season. And as I mentioned here, at this point, we're just gonna speed things up a little bit. We are getting to basically just the dominate each race part. And once the side part is done, we're going to make a final edition. And generally here for research, we're just going to be flipping between suspension, underfloor, side pods, and chassis. As the front wing and rear wing research is going to be done mainly with CFD. They're very expensive to do. But if you feel like you are not really getting any gains from, say, we, from side pod, we're kind of getting to that 60-70% range. We can start to say invest a little bit in low speed effort front or anything like that if you feel things are slowing down a lot. But for now, we're just going to stick with those sliders that I showed you earlier and try and get as much research done as possible. So now that we're done with that race weekend, let's go quickly over here how easy it actually is to upgrade your staff to the best that you can get in the championship. As you can see, everyone here is open to negotiation. The only difference is their patience levels. And the patient is basically how many offers they're going to listen to. So really, all we need to do is go to back, for instance. We propose a contract. He tells us kind of what he is looking for. And all we need to do is slap in a number that he would accept. Five million is a little bit too high. And we'll go with four and a half because honestly, the difference between these two is nothing. And if we overpay him, he's more likely to accept anyways. Now, in previous patches, you could use signing bonus as an easy get out of jail free card, but generally now it's not worth it. It's better to just straight up pay a salary rather than a signing bonus, and it's going to end up being a lot better that way. We could offer him a new contract. And for the sporting director, we want to upgrade him as well, and we're going to get to go ahead and do that like in kind of that same manner. But as you can imagine here, depending on what you're looking for, it is incredibly easy now to sign any sort of talent that you that you want to get your hands on. You just basically do it like this. And as long as you're on the far right of that bar, they will accept. No matter how good they are, you can do this with the worst creator team as well. So signing new uh, staff is really easy. Just pay attention though, because the AI can sometimes decide to go all out and try and snatch them back, so to speak. But try and get these contracts sorted before you go into summer break. And generally, you'll be fine. As we get close to summer break here, we now have gotten that final chassis done. We're going to get that final sidepod done too. And we're going to be putting both of those parts on the car from um, Sandvert. We do have that next period coming up in 35 days. But since the chassis now is done, we can actually start doing some research on it and making sure that we kind of keep those stats that we have built up. We could invest a little bit into engine cooling here, but considering that it's basically 0.2%, we're going to focus on drag reduction air flow middle just to get more performance out of the car going into next year. And we're going to do the same with the sideboard. Once this is done, we're going to be probably running two, three sideboard researches. Same here for the chassis. And we'll still just switch back and forth with the suspension and the underfloor. And we'll have to take a look at, once we get that next safety period, if we want to do more with the rear wing and the uh, front wing. As we reach the end here of the summer break, we have started doing research on both chassis, side pods, and suspension underfloor. We're going to be running all four of these researches kind of back to back until we get that next safety period, and then we'll make a decision if we need more research going into front and rear wing. Now, because we now also have the final edition of the chassis and the side pods finished, we can kind of take a look at what they are going to do for us. They're not going to do anything massive right now. We are still in a very dominant position, but getting these new pieces and particularly the top speed gain there for the side pod is going to benefit us in our chase to kind of catching up here with the Red Bulls. who have actually overtaken us now in terms of high speed cornering. And we're going to have a little bit of a closer fight here with Verstappen in particular over the next 10 or so races, which is towards the end of the season. Now, luckily for us, by the time the standings right now, have us with a good 100 point lead over Red Bull. Now, I have simulated a lot of the races this season, but generally, if you manage your races manually, you'll have a much better time than if trying to simulate against Verstappen. It's just 
somehow the way the game works. Now, at Drivers' Championship, we have a good 56 points here on Verstappen. So as long as we ensure that Alonso ends up second for the rest of the season, he will actually most likely end up winning. And honestly, we should be able to snatch some wins still. Red Bull barely has an advantage in high-speed cornering. We have an advantage everything everywhere else. And the best part is... Well, we don't have top speed. And the best part is, as I mentioned, Alonso still has enthusiastic mentality. So he is going to be near max stats as long as we get that confidence up. Which is one of the reasons that if you're running things manually from this point on, you should have no problem winning every single race until the end of the year. We have gotten to our second to last ATR period. If we if we go into the border right now and check the rules and regulations, we can actually see what our research has done. You can see we gained 11.52% expertise from for airflow front. We're losing 3.43, so we're still 8% in plus. And if we check other things that we've done research on, like the chassis, it needs it needs a lot more work. Same for the side pods, but that's because we have kept on designing rather than researching, so they need a little bit extra help. Not enough really to put safety time into, I feel. And when it comes to the suspension here, again, I think we're fine without using safety time, but it would probably benefit us to put safety time in either the underfloor or the suspension, and then use the final one on one of the wings again. I think that is going to actually be the thing that's going to benefit us the most. And there's two reasons why I recommend doing a double safety research on the front of the rear wing. And the main reason is because it takes a lot a long time to make these. And if you're going to do this at the start of a season, for instance, and you are going to do two iterations, it's going to cost you a lot of more money and it's also going to cost you a lot of time. So it's better to get any sort of safety time if you're planning to use it on a wing at the start of next year. Just bake it into the research for this year and your car, your engineers, everyone will kind of thank you for that. We're probably going to do front wing here and suspension for CFD and just make sure that we have projects running for sideboard, underfloor and chassis until the end of the year. I think that is going to be the uh, the plan and we're going to put another period here into the front wing because that low speed cornering is just very, very powerful, uh, kind of no matter how you slice it and having more of it does not hurt at all. As you can see, our gains are kind of a lot smaller this time around. And that is, again, because our expertise level has gone up. So it could be one of the reasons why you might want to put it in to say something else. But in this case, I still think that it's kind of worth it to run just a double CFD into your wings. Mainly just because those wings are very, very beneficial. They cost more to make. They are a huge source of performance. And generally then by, again, just doing a double safety period now, we kind of avoid doing that next year, so to speak. But that is basically my logic for now, though. We are going to speed along to the rest end of the season here. We have been winning the last few races. We're now on 12 wins out of, I believe, 16 possible. As you can see, so things are looking very, very well. And Alonso keeps on extending his lead now to close to 70 points. So with that, I think we are going to succeed our goal here of getting... Uh, almost a title. Unfortunately, Stroll hasn't been quite up there. He's not keeping up with Verstappen. With our chassis research complete here again, we've actually done quite a few of these projects by now. We're in November, and honestly, the championship has already been kind of sorted. We have Vegas, Qatar, and of course, Abu Dhabi left. And even if the Red Bull score the maximum amount of points in all three of these races, uh, race weekends rather, they're not going to catch us, neither in the constructors nor in the Drivers' Championship, as uh, Alonso here has kind of stacked himself up pretty well. We basically have already achieved what we set out to do. As I mentioned, I've simulated a lot of the races this season, and generally you should be able to perform a lot better by doing them manually. Again, just following kind of what we did those first two couple of races, so do keep that in mind. Now, lastly here, we have one more safety period, and we could put that in, say, the rear wing. And let's take a quick look here and see what that would actually give us. And this is something I recommend to do if you're uncertain about the effects of something, particularly when it comes to research. You can just put the safety in, you can move the sliders to what you kind of want to do. And then you can see, do I like the result here? Would I like to invest the safety period into something else? And generally here, what I would like to probably do here is wait until we get that suspension design slot ready, because currently we are running a suspension research and it's going to be done in seven days. So once that is done, we're actually just going to start another one that is going to allow us to uh, put in that CFD into the suspension then. 
Next up, we're just going to run another chassis, kind of like we've run everything here. And it's basically just building the car for next year at this point. So we're just going to keep on research going. And at this point, honestly, you're probably running out a little bit of cost cap. But as long as you can do similar to what we've done, you should be fine. If you have had some bad crashes, you're going to have to probably spend a little bit less money. But because we focus on cooling, we've been able to kind of maintain our car in a very, very good manner. Considering that we have three race weekends left, this is a very, very healthy state for the car to be in. We're going to be putting one more research into the suspension. This time we're going to be using CFD mainly for the tire preservation gain here. If we can get to 70% base before we add anything else next year, that would actually be kind of insane in the sense that it's going to allow us to get our tire preservation closer to 80%, which is going to make a lot of strategies more viable. We're going to give us a lot more freedom with strategies. And of course, tire preservation, if done well, is one of the best ways really to gain time on your opponents. So... We're gonna be we're gonna go ahead and invest in that right here. Underfloor research has also finished, and we're just gonna go ahead and do what I have been doing the entire year, which is just again immediately start a new one. Same sliders. In this case, we don't really need to change things around much. But if you feel like you are getting less gains, as I said, it's fine to do the sliders to what you prefer. We have reached the end of the year here, and we did, as I mentioned, end up winning. Stroll came forth with 312 points. We have Alonso with 483 as our champion. We end up with 795 total, and it has been a very, very good year. Now, in terms of how we compared to Red Bull, we did not beat them too handily at just by 150 points. Abu Dhabi we also had a double DNF. <laughs> As interesting as that is, our cars might have taken each other out. But yeah, that did kind of skewed a little bit in Red Bull's favor. But as you can see, Ferrari is close in hand. And with that DNF here, Leclerc won Abu Dhabi and put uh, Stroll down into fourth place. But yeah, we basically have dominated here with uh, our team. And it hasn't been particularly difficult, I'll be perfectly honest. So we're now going to go and take a look at what our car looks like going into the next year. And again, if you're doing this manually, you are definitely scoring more than 800 points. I can almost guarantee it. But yeah, let's see how our research has stacked up against the AI and how our team looks going into next year. So balance wise, we actually saved up a lot of money. As you see, we're going to have a starting balance of 20 million. I didn't spend really much money other than just upgrading the team hub. A little bit on the race sim. Could probably upgrade both of those a little bit more. That's the only thing I would do different. In terms of research here, particularly the suspension, which we see if deed, has had a huge jumps say 20% across the board, more or less, or rather for what we care about. Underfloor, probably need a little bit more love, but we can fix this by just see if Ding it going into next year. Side pods, did kind of get everything sorted here, but I would have loved to put more effort into it. I'll be perfectly honest. It is what happens though when you focus on design rather than research. And the same here kind of goes with the chassis. Now the front wing here did get that, uh, you know, double CFD period. So that too did get about 20%. Same here really for low speed. Uh, so that is good. Rear wing, still decent gains across the board if I'm honest. So research wise, there isn't really too much you need to kind of do. Just focus on the same sliders that you did when you made the signs and work on the strengths while you do research as well. Now, into the next year here. And let's see where our car is at. So we now have the best car in low speed cornering because we double CFD the, uh, the front wing. That isn't too surprising. And if we compare ourselves to say the Red Bull right now, where are we at? So we are really, really close to the Red Bull. And most stats say except high speed cornering, which again, we can get back fairly easily. We already have 76% tire preservation. And is it the Ferrari that is the best team then? Uh, because there is actually a team that has developed better than the Red Bull, and it is the McLaren. So I'd say this is a good starting point, probably one where you can keep that dominance going. This is the big regulation change season, though. So ideally, you would just make one out of each part. And just out of curiosity here, how high can we actually bring our tire preservation stat right now? Pretty high, over 80% as I kind of expected. But keep in mind also the higher your stats, the lower your gain. So if we were to go and take a look at, say, the underfloor right now, and we try and maximize cornering and maybe maximize that low speed, uh, that high speed cornering, which is kind of what we lack, we could get a good 75 out of that alone. And if we then add the chassis to the mix, how much can we get here? 
get a good 60, so we can still catch up to McLaren, but you're probably going to have a little bit of a harder year here because the you're going to be focusing on research, the AI is not, but dominating the first year and getting yourself a very, very good starting point for the second year is definitely possible. Hope this uh, video has been kind of helpful, probably ha was a little bit all over the place. I'm undecided on how I want to do these videos, how much racing I want to show, how much I want to focus on the, the science and the research, because they do become kind of repetitive, so let me know what you think. But yeah, hope you enjoyed, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe, as I'll be making more of this in the future. And I do hope to see you around next time. Bye bye!